Okay guys, we are going to continue with the sixth video for uh, introductions to uh, in, uh, organic chemistry where we are going to continue from where we stopped last week, uh, last video. So the last video is focused on uh, geometrical isomerism. So today we are going to go into optical isomerism. So the second type of stereoisomerism is also known as an optical isomerism where optical isomerism is defined as isomers that have the same molecular structure but yet give the different effect on plane polarized light. So an organic compound which exhibit optical isomerism is also known as enantiomer. So where, the, uh, where it is a type of serial isomers whose molecules are non superimposable between the object and image. So in order to understand what does it mean by superimposable and non superimposable, let's have a look together. So it is described as when an object is mirrored, the image is then overlapped to the object. Therefore, if the object and image are overlapped, were superimposable, so we define this object as a chiral object, which is a non chiral object. If the object and image overlap were non superimposable, then we say that this is a chiral object, okay, simply chiral. So let's have a look at the examples of what is a chiral object and what are the examples of a chiral object. So let's say this is your right hand. When you reflect, it will become your left hand. Okay, so between the right hand and the left hand, you overlap each other like this. So you eventually find out that when you overlap each other like this, uh, between the left hand and the right hand, they are non superimposable. So therefore, we say that this is a chiral object. So other than uh, hands, you can have glove and seashells, which are also chiral objects. Examples of a chiral objects are, for example, glasses, spectacles, and also balls. So here are the examples of the glass, uh, of the spectacles, of the glasses, and of the ball. We can see that if they reflect with the object, so they are superimposable. Therefore, as a, a chiral object. So for an organic molecule to exhibit optical isomerism, a carbon inside the organic molecule must be a tetrahedrally bonded, which has sp3 hybridization, and surround the most importantly surround by four different atoms or group of atoms where the object and image will be non superimposable. So when that carbon, particular carbon is identified, we call that carbon as a chiral carbon atom. And for that chiral carbon atom, we mark as a star or asterisk on the top of the carbon itself. So uh, let us understand on how an organic work in the form of optical isomerism. So let's say this is the object for the organic compound where it is surrounded by four different atoms. So when you uh, mirror to this, it will be reflected and form something like this. So when you rotate it, you can see that, yes, we, see, we do see that between the X and the Z are, are impossible. But if you look at the W and the Y, W and the Y, they are non superimposable. Therefore, we, overall, we set the object as a non superimposable. So that is what it means by a chiral carbon atoms. So the most important point in here is you must have a carbon surrounded by four different atoms or group of atoms. So let's have a look at a few examples that uh, is non-chiral. Okay, so we say that a two chloropropane does not exhibit optical isomerism. So why does two chloropropane does not exhibit optical isomerism? Let's have a look below. So if you set if we center at the second carbon in here, so the second carbon is surrounded by H, Cl, and then it's surrounded left and right by a CH3. So if we reflect this object to become this is the image. Now towards this image, we rotate 180 degrees so that you'll be looking in this manner. So if we now overlap between the blue object, uh, the blue image, and also the yellow image, do you see the points that they are completely impossible? So when they are completely impossible, we say that this is a chiral object, therefore it does not exhibit optical isomerisms. Now similar things can be shown in one methyl chlorocyclohexane. It also does not exhibit optical isomerism. For example, if you have a CH3 like this, so you must know that there is a H. So this carbon is then reflected. The reflected image should become like this. So I will take 180 degrees. So if you compare between this object and also this image, you eventually find out that they are super impossible. Therefore, does not exhibit optical isomerism. The next few examples will help you to distinguish what does it mean by an optical active molecules. 
So for example, Bhutan 1 ohm. So for Bhutan 1 ohm, the second carbon is a chiral carbon atom. Now if you notice carefully for this carbon, it is surrounded by H, OH. At the left, it is CH3. At the right, it is CH2, CH3. So it will reflect the whole image. Okay, so it will become CH2, CH3, H, OH, and CH3. So if you match with this, the uh, image after it rotate 180, you eventually find out that yes, of course, CH2, CH3, CH, uh, this CH3 are impossible, super impossible, but not this H and not this OH. They are completely non impossible. So if it is not super impossible, therefore we say that this is a chiral carbon atom and hence describe Bhutan to all as that exhibit an optical active exomers. Another example is 2 phenylpropanol, where again the se uh, second carbon will act as a chiral carbon atoms. So when we draw in the form of tetrahedral form, so it is drawn as CHOCH -CH, like this. When it is reflected, so uh, it will become like this and we rotate in order to compare we need to rotate 180 so it looks like this so you can see that between the object and also the image they are not completely super impossible therefore we say that it exhibits optical isomerisms so for that reasons uh, this is how okay now you know that uh, notice that after you draw the image you do not need to draw this one uh, for this diagram, I just want to show you what does it really means by non superimposable for an uh, uh, molecule object. So once you identify it has a chiral carbon atom, basically all you have to draw is just the object and also the mirror image. That's it. Okay. So uh, another example that you can see in the cyclo structure is 2 chloro one methyl cyclopentane. So in 2 chloro one methyl cyclopentane, so uh, when it is uh, reflected, so it, here it has the two chiral carbon atoms. So in the first one, when it is reflected, it is not the same as you can see. And same goes with when you go to the CH3, when it is reflected, it is not also the same with the object. Therefore, we say that it can exhibit a uh, chiral carbon atom, uh, it has chiral carbon atom, therefore exhibited optical isomerisms. Okay? Okay, so let's have a look at a few more examples where some of the molecules can possibly exhibit uh, both uh, geometrical isomers and also optical isomers. So, for example, in 3 methyl pentanoic acid, we said that third carbon is a chiral carbon atom. So, this is the chiral carbon atom in here. So, if you were to draw in the this one, so you know that it is surrounded by four different group of atoms. H, CH3, CH2, COH, and CH3, CH2. So when we draw the image of the reflections, it will be look, looking like this. So uh, this is how it shows that um, a molecules exhibited an optical isomerism. And last example is 4 methyl 2 hexenal. Now for this object, uh, for this uh, hydrocarbon, not only that it exhibits uh, optical isomerism, but at the same time it also exhibited geometrical isomerism. So they are generally both isomers inside this molecule, where this is how it shows that it exhibits optical isomerism. And where, whereas this is the uh, geometrical isomerism where it can exhibit as a cis and trans. So my highlight point in here is some molecules, if you uh, draw pro properly, it can exhibit both geometrical and also optical isomerisms. Okay, okay. So that is all for the stereoisomerisms. We will continue next with free radical, nucleophile, and electrophile. So. Organic molecules are generally formed by covalent bond. So therefore, when a covalent bond is formed, a pair of electrons is shared between two atoms. However, for when this covalent bond is broken, the two electrons are redistributed between the atoms bonded. So generally, there are two ways of how these electrons are redistributed. So we are now talking about how covalent bond is break. So when covalent bond is break, there is possibly two types of breaking. One is called as a homolytic fission, another type is called as heterolytic fission. Now in homolytic fission, the two shared electrons are distributed evenly between the two atoms, so therefore you form a free radicals, so with a single electron unit. So the terms homolytics in here uh, goes to the formations of the single, uh, single electron, which is the radical between the two atoms, which is the same. So that makes, that's what makes it um, free radicals. So it's single radical, so free radicals tend to be unstable, thus reactive. So example, if chlorine molecules were to dissociate homolytically, 
So it will form two chlorine radicals. If it is a methyl molecule that will undergo homolytic dissociation, so you form methyl radical and also hydrogen radicals. Another type of bond breaking is described as heterolytic fusion, where a shared electron in the covalent bond goes only in one atom. So the electron pair usually goes to the atom with higher electronegativity. So uh, eventually, one of them will become more negatively charged. So you assume like uh, if electrons are donated to that particular atom, so the atom that receives the electron will become a negatively charged, while the one that responsible to donate the electron will become a positive charge. For example, now chlorine, as we described just now, can break in homolytic. It can also break in heterolytic fission, where in here, uh, one of the chlorine has accepted the electron pair and forming Cl minus chloride ion and also chlorine ions. Another example is 2 2 dimethyl bromo, uh, 2, 2 bromo 2 methyl propane, where in here you can also undergo heterolytic fission, where the electrons will go to the molecule or atoms which is more electronegative. So, therefore, the bromine in here will form a bromide ion, and here you form a third butyl ion. Okay. Okay, so what is the after effect of forming all this ion? This ion can be then categorized into another type of uh, molecule. We call them as nucleophile and also electrophile. So what is a nucleophile means? So the terms nucleo refers to nucleus, files means love. So in the overall naming, it says that a nucleophile is a nu uh, loving nucleus. So in the terms of acid-base theory, now that Lewis acid base theory, nucleophiles are often a Lewis base because electron pair is donated to the particular involved. So uh, examples of nucleophile are hydroxide ion, RO, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, cyanide ion, carbon ions, uh, alcohol, uh, alkene, uh, ammonium, uh, NH2, uh, not NH3, NH2, so RH2, H2O, so all of these are examples of nucleophile. Then the opposite one is electrophile. So electrophiles means electron loving. So in the terms of Lewis acid base theory, it, will, it is often a Lewis acid where it is except the lone pair electrons. So examples are hydrogen ion or hydrosonium ion, nitronium ion, even chlorine and chlorine ion, bromine, bromine ion, iodine and iodine ions are also electrophile due to the tendency of these halogens to accept electron. Then this is uh, Rn2 is a uh, diazonium ion, okay, carbon ions, okay, uh, alkyl ions, okay, boron trifluoride, aluminum chloride, iron bromide, and also zinc chloride. So all of them are categorized as electrophiles. Finally, we have what we call as a type of reaction in organic chemistry. So the reaction involving organic chemistry can be generally categorized into three different reactions, namely uh, substitution reactions, additional reactions, and also elimination reactions. So what are the differences between these three types of reactions? Let's have a look together. So the first one is what we call as a substitution, where substitution is defined as one or more atoms or group of atoms is substituted by another group of atoms. For example, in the hydrolysis of haloalkane, where the hydroxide ion is substituting the chlorine, so you form an alcohol and chloride ion. So when one, at one atom or group of atom is substituting another atom or group of atom inside the organic compound, therefore this reaction is described as a substitution reaction. The next reaction is additional reactions. So in an additional reaction, two reactants react together to form a single product. For example, when you have bromine molecule is added to alkene, so you form CH2Br, CH2Br. So note that during the process, the double bond has disappeared and formed only single bond, and there are no side product formed for this reaction. So therefore, when it is direct, it seems like the bromine molecule is directly added to the alkene molecule. Therefore, that is why we call this type of reaction as additional reactions. Last but not least, we have what we so-called as elimination reaction, where a small atom or group of atom is removed or eliminated from the organic molecule involved. For example, dehydration of alcohol. So in dehydration of alcohol, hydrogen from a, a hydroxide from a C and the hydrogen from another C were to eliminate to form water molecule. So this elimination will form an unsaturated uh, hydrocarbon, therefore forming an alkene. 
So that is all for the introduction to organic uh, chemistry. So beginning our next video slide, we will start to introduce to you a new functioning group in organic compound. Okay. So with that, I start my video for today. Thank you very much.